uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I won't repeat the time, time because it's too long. What is it about? It's about resonant viscosity sensors, viscosity and mass sensors. So these sensors are both mass density and viscosity, and we want to separate experimentally the effects of viscosity and mass. Um, I want to start my talk with an overview of, of viscosity and mass density. So the, the, the variety is, is rather huge. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that, so the, to the, the topic I'm really talking about is quite theoretic. It's all about juggling with uh, multiple order, higher order uh, polynomial functions. And as it is the last day of the conference, I would try to show you all a little bit around and then the reason why we are actually doing this. I would say the most prominent device is the micro cantilever. Uh, this device is uh, uh, a silicon-based device excited via Lorentz forces and red out optically. Uh, a variant is the U-shaped cantilever, also excited by Lorentz forces, red out optically. Uh, so is the vibrating bridge device depicted in this picture. Optical readout is not maybe the best choice for liquid sensors, as you could also have opaque liquids. So there are uh, also silicon devices, which, for example, uh, use uh, piezo-resistive readout. The drawback of that is you get very noisy signals, low signals. So, uh, for example, also this rotational disk, there's also a thermally actuated version of that. It's also piezoelectric readout. Uh, but as I already mentioned, the, the, the signals are very noisy and your uh, measurement, measurement accuracy is pretty low. Another study was a double membrane resonator um, or a suspended platelet resonator, a tunable suspended platelet resonator, wire viscosimeter, spiral spring. So this was pretty funny. This was nothing else than really like a spring which you will find in a pen used as viscosity and mass density sensor uh, oscillating in a lateral uh, direction. There was also a torsional oscillator. Uh, you can imagine this device as a DC motor, which you just clamp at both ends and excited to torsional uh, oscillations. Uh, I think the most uh, promising devices for viscosity and mass density sensors are tuning fork based sensors. There are multiple reasons for that. Uh, the best, uh, the, the, uh, one of the main reasons is that their resonance frequency is the most stable by its mechanical structure. So they are singly clamped, they show low cross sensitivity to temperature, and they are balanced resonators, which is very important if you want to have handheld devices. Any other device like singly clamped devices like uh, micro cantilevers, uh, they depend on the surrounding of, of the clamping, so don't tuning forks. And uh, yesterday I was also talking about U-tube and U-shaped wire uh, resonators. The working principle of all these devices is principally the same. So the uh, resonance frequency and the quality factor of these devices depend on both uh, mass density and uh, viscosity. And by the analysis, for example, of the frequency response, we finally can determine uh, viscosity and mass density. The modeling of these devices, which I will not explain here, but just this is just the outline of the U-shaped wire, is quite complex and it's quite unintuitive. I showed you uh, the uh, doesn't know. I showed you the, the, the huge variety of, of these devices, okay? And we want to have a mean how to, an easy mean to compare these devices amongst others. Uh, and as you can imagine, by this modeling approach, which furthermore, uh, unfortunately, doesn't uh, give you always the right results. So this is already a quite good modeling result. But however, you, we have a clear deviation between theory and experimental results. So what we needed is additionally calibration functions. So uh, the thing even comes less intuitive and uh, less easy to compare. Uh, to overcome this, we developed uh, 
a simplified general, generalized uh, model which uh, can be calibrated using not more than three calibration liquids. This is, is not, uh, uh, not very much. And by the knowledge of these uh, modeling parameters, you easily can de determine the at least four sensitivities you get with such devices. Uh, the sen relative sensitivity is given here, where X either stands for resonance frequency or quality factor, and Y uh, stands either for viscosity and mass density. This model has been successfully to supplied to uh, sensors we found in literature where sufficient data was available and sufficient data is always resonance frequency, quality factor, viscosity, and mass density. Very often you will, will, uh, very often you will only find vis the viscosity values which is not enough for characterizing these sensors as they uh, also depend on mass density. So this was more a theoretical work. Uh, but to make it more solid, of course, we want to characterize them experimentally. And if you choose random liquids, uh, these random liquids will be dis distributed somewhere on these surfaces, which you will get. So as I told you, resonance frequency, which is depicted on the left, and quality factor depend, as I already said multiple times, depend on both viscosity and mass. This is enough if you want to characterize uh, the parameters in the simplified model. But what very often we would like to do is to sh give such graphs of resonance frequency over viscosity and so on, which would not be possible if you choose the liquids like that. What you rather want to do is you want to have a liquid series where only the viscosity changes and the mass density is all the same within the series. Or another, or another approach where you have liquid series where the viscosity is constant, but the mass density is series. With this approach, you could, uh, as it was done here, for example, for a tuning fork, uh, finally depict the dependency of the resonance frequency and quality factor to viscosity and mass density. If you're looking closely at these results, there's something, some very interesting <laughs> results. Uh, in the, in, in this uh, viscosity series plots, if you look at the resonance frequency, uh, which is depicted uh, for liquid mixtures with viscosity ranging, ranging from 0.2 to 2 uh, millipascal uh, seconds, that the second value gives you a higher resonance frequency than the first value. This is quite unlogical. The reason for that is uh, that the liquid series we used was just a mixture of acetone and isopropanol. So if you do viscosity sensing, you know these solvents all, uh, all have a mass density of roughly 0.78 gram per cubic centimeter, and the viscosities they give you would range from uh, 0.2 to 2 millipascal seconds. So we assumed, okay, the mass density should be the same, which is actually not the fact. The viscosity sensors are so mass sensitive that the very low variation of mass density, um, mass density is decreasing for the second lecture, raises the resonance frequency again. Another very interesting finding here, I was pretty surprised, is that it is possible for liquid mixture, so again, this is a mixture of acetone and isopropanol, that it is possible that uh, you get mass densities within the mixture, which is lower, it's also possible that it would be higher, than one of your pure components. So this is also very interesting. What happens if you mix the mixture, they either get warm or cold. And if that happens, you can have this uh, behavior that the mixture gets a lower or higher uh, density as your uh, pure liquids. So again, for getting this liquid series with constant viscosities or constant mass densities, binary, li binary uh, mixtures might not be the right choice. So we have to use ternary liquid mixtures. Uh, 
which are not quite well modeled yet. And what we did uh, based on uh, a model for the viscosity of uh, binary lixtures, which was uh, proposed by Arrhenius in 1887, uh, we extended this uh, equation, so this is now solved the viscosity, for ternary mixtures, where uh, each uh, pure viscosity component, of course, is temperature dependent. The model we chose uh, for, the for accounting for the temperature dependent was just these uh, very easy exponential functions and we um, just shifted the temperature uh, because if you consider that the temperature should be here in Kelvin, uh, then if you have in the exponent something like 300 anything, that you get really low values. I'm talking to the power of minus 30 something. So it becomes quite, in, uh, so the zero viscosity becomes quite intuitive. That's why we do the shift, but you do not uh, um, enhance or decrease uh, the modeling uh, accuracy. The mixing of terrain lectures of uh, mass density is quite intuitive for ideal, ideal uh, mixtures. And for, to account for uh, the mass density, we are using second order polynomials. You will also sometimes find uh, uh, rational functions, but the drawback of rational functions is <laughs> that they show a singularity, which is totally not a physical behavior of the temperature dependence of the mass density. We applied this simple model to measurement data we found in literature, and as you can clearly see, there is a deviation. So what you see here is the, the deviation of the measured data from the ideal model. So what modeling is all about is just to account for the deviation from your ideal models, which we do using BC triangles. BC triangles is nothing else than a, a, a two-dimensional uh, polynomial of order n. A PC triangle of second order is given here. If you plot it, you have control points where in our case we choose the control point at the end to be zero and we all only have to uh, uh, set the control points in the middle. Actually, we are using fifth order uh, PC triangles and what we do is to account for the temperature dependence uh, of the liquids is that these uh, control points are modeled uh, by a second order polynomial to account for the temperature dependence. Yeah, and finally, by uh, these PC triangles, we are able to completely uh, model the um, temperature dependent viscosity of ternary li liquid. liquid. Uh, using a fifth order PC triangle requires 63 co coefficients, which is quite a lot, but uh, this requires 21 mixtures, which you have to uh, determine at least at free temperature. But what we did, and with the state of the art equipment, this is not very difficult to do, is we mixed 98 mixtures, uh, which we measured at 17 temperatures. Okay, so thank you very much for your uh, attention. I would be happy to answer questions. Thank you.